Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 346. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google product expert on the uh, AdSense uh, community. Tim Kappa, uh, or oh, Masataki, is based in Wimbledon, uh, um, a suburb of London. Um, Tim Kappa is about 100 miles north of London. He is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. He's also a Google product expert on the uh, Google My Business community. Uh, my, uh, yeah, Tim's at Corby. Sorry, I missed. I think I missed saying Corby. Micah Fisher Kirshner is director of uh, SEO and content at Turn River Capital. Uh, he's um, also the uh, um, president of a uh, popular. Um, SEO meetup group um, in uh, Silicon Valley. Is that, is that, have I got that right, Micah? Yeah, about 6,000 miles west of London. 6,000 miles west of London. Is that far enough, do you think? Uh, I don't know. I just threw it out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not far check. enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we've got 10 questions tonight. We've, we've, we've actually got more than 10, but we're just getting back into uh, after our three-week hiatus, getting back into the swing of things. All right, let's um, look at the, um, the first one. Um, it's titled, How to uh, Select um, Suitable Keywords. It's from Camberul uh, Islam. Um, and uh, Cameron says, uh, hello everyone, I need some suggestions writing, regarding keyword selection and how to uh, find suitable keywords. Thanks in advance. Oh. Well, suitable keywords will depend on your business. Um, what what you specifically focus on? Where do you spend the time? Uh, essentially, wanting to make money um, will kind of determine essentially the type of keywords you're going to want. It's pretty broad. Um, I think the question will come down to you know what kind of tool sets are you are you looking for? I mean, Google Web Google AdWords Keyword Planner, though not perfect without a. Uh, a paid search program will give you kind of a set of terms um, that you can understand about, you know, a range of what people are searching for online um, and give you general concepts of that. There are other tools like SEMrush um, that will give you a bit more details uh, and you can find kind of areas of which uh, more specific numbers of, of what uh, people are, are searching for. Um, and, you yeah, know, assuming you're looking at the search results, uh, for them, you can get an understanding of <clears throat> whether or not those terms are appropriate you know, to your business line. But uh, uh, that's kind of just a quick way to, to think about, you know, what terms are going to be actually useful to your business. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? Um, there's also one um, which are free. Um, which are quite quite useful. Um, uh, uh, this it's called Answer the Public. It, it's it, now it, it depends on what your your main sort of keyword is uh, or product that you're going to add in to start with. Depends on what kind of answer you're going to you know so, sort of data you're going to get from them. Uh, normally pretty good. They can normally come up you know even if it's very vague. They can normally come up with a few ideas for you. Uh, you can split it down into questions or phrases, things like that. Um, and as a free tool, it's, it's, it's pretty helpful. And then what you can do is at the same time, you can use those and bounce across 
uh, to to add words to kind of you know sort of fill you in um, a little bit more um, if you wanted to get actual numbers uh, related to that. But yeah, that's that's quite a you know good selection to play around with. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's um, wrap that up for Camrul and um, let's uh, go to the next. This one from Swapnil Tired. Um, does web hosting affect the Google ranking of a website? I mean, if the web host doesn't do a good job of actually hosting your site, that can definitely play a part into affecting how you rank it. For example, if it's not up all the time, if it's yeah, you know, the servers are extremely slow, those are things that can definitely affect uh, the ranking of your website. Um, outside of a few of those things, for the most part, it's not going to be hugely detrimental if you're choosing between uh, one kind of web hosting versus another. Yeah. I, I, I'd just like to add, um, um, I don't know if it's still the case. It, it, might, it might be fine. But uh, certainly for, for around about uh, 10 years, um, GoDaddy was notorious for blocking the uh, uh, crawling of uh, Googlebot. And of course, uh, then Google would naturally drop those pages from its index and search list for it. So, um, you know, it, 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 they, they then turn it back on. And of course, the, the, the uh, owner of the website would not know why his site wasn't performing all that well. It was just um, that it, its performance was erratic. But as I say, I don't know if that's still the case. Um, anybody um, fill us in? Okay. All right, let's move on from that to, to number three on our run list. It's um, from Pim Sandra. And it's uh, how, Pim asks, how many articles should you have to increase um, organic rankings 42 no more no less <clears throat> <laughs> yeah i think there were a few um answers like uh mike is <laughs> oh yeah um, i have that yeah i think it ranged from 17 upwards of 42. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, look, I think you're looking at it the wrong way in the sense that it's not necessarily about a, a specific set number uh, of articles. Um, you know, if you're gonna if if you're gonna write articles or you've got the you know you've got um, you know. Uh, someone there on the team that can you know create content or whatever the case may be i think you should uh, and it's always good to to um to focus on the specific topics within whatever your site is product service whatever and to to you know focus an answer on all the uh prospective customer stroke users, uh, potential questions, queries, uh, informational queries around those products or services or what, whatever the site may be. Um, proper, you know, interlinking throughout the articles, um, segmenting it towards, you know, your proper category uh, and then towards the actual, um, you know, the actual product or service on, on the site, those particular pages um and even then you know let's just say you know this is a brand new site you don't really have any um links pointing to it you haven't really built up anything you know you could chuck on 100 articles and it might 
you know, dial the needle a little bit. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot more to it than just creating articles, but that is a really good way of, um, you know, uh, providing the information to customers or users for when they get there. Um, it's also a good way of catching them in between the purchasing stroke research phase. Um, so yeah, definitely you want to be looking at that, but I think for you to just think, oh, I write articles to get this, that that's kind of the wrong thinking. You need to understand why you're going to be creating the content and what you're intending the content to do. You know, you shouldn't just be thinking content to rank. You should be thinking, I should be capturing the user or the customer during their, you know, their research or their purchasing journey. Um, and the more times you start appearing to them, you're creating that brand affinity along the way. Um, and they're trusting what you're saying. You're answering all the right things. They continually start seeing you for things around that product, questions, answers, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be also written content. You know, you can think YouTube, you know, video may work better depending on what a, uh, the service or product is. Um, and you're building up that brand affinity, making it a more, more likely for them to use that product or service that the, the actual site offers because you've built up that trust throughout the research process that, or the, you know, the consumer journey that they're, they're taking. So, um, you know, yeah, do, you know, concentrate and, 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 and invest in, 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 in sort of content, but don't think of it as like, how is it going to increase my rankings? Thank you, Tim. I think we will cover, yeah, that, there, there, there was a lot of levity uh, on, on uh, answering that um, question. We've, we've got to also consider, though, when, when we're um, uh, answering it, is, is that the, the user uh, or the person that's asked the question, I should say, they have no idea whether, you know, they have no idea how funny the, the thing is that they've asked. Yes, Jim, but we also need a little bit of fun along the way. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Actually, what Micah was telling us about a, 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 a BBC helicopter, he, he said he saw you in um, Trafalgar Square hanging on a statue or something. Is that right, Micah? I can neither yeah. confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's uh, move on to the next. Tom Brown asked the question. He wants to know, can SEO help your business? I wonder if he expected a negative answer from our community. Well, <laughs> it's like, <sighs> yeah, it, it depends with what, Tom. Um, it's like, it, yeah, it really depends. Look, so if you are some hip, trendy, up and coming uh, fashion label, pair of jeans, right? Um, yeah, you've got your site, you've got your products. You know, there's kind of, uh, you know, and as long as that, you know, if you had a developer that had a basic understanding of SEO, you know, let's say for argument's sake that the that you you know your site is properly set up. It's you know it's properly developed. Um, you know, uh, images, everything's taken care of. So you, you haven't then had to sort of in in a sense invest in SEO. Now, and then because you're a hip and trendy sort of little thing, uh, you know, like for jeans or whatever, um, you're primary focus for the target market, you think, right, we're going to hit uh, YouTube, Facebook, um, and Instagram, and do, and, and maybe even TikTok or whatever, right? Because it's hip, it's trendy, you can do like really cool video kind of stuff. Well, that in a sense could probably drive the business for that model to the, the, the site and to purchase, right? So that necessarily wouldn't be SEO. Yes, they could, you know, help tie it all together. But in a sense, you could take that out of the situation, right? 
if you were looking at, you know, so it, the, for, for me, yeah, it surely can. But what I'm saying is it doesn't always have to be just SEO. Um, and it can be portions of it. Um, it can be, you know, part of it. It can be, as long as, you know, all the different cogs work together as they're intended um, and all the different pieces are, are working, then, you know, technically not. Um, but of course, those other little aspects along the way do incorporate small pieces of SEO in terms of outreach, pushing out your content, making sure it's found in the right places, um, yeah, things like that. Uh, so yes, it can, but I wouldn't say it's always an essential element depending on what the business is. Thank you, Tim. Fantastic answer. Nobody wants to add anything to that, do they? Okay, let's go to the next on our run list. It's number five. Um, it's from Joshua Wells. Um, it's on citations and directory listing for national SEO. Um, Joshua said, uh, hey, I have a question. Uh, do you do citations and directory listings for national SEO or is that just for local SEO? No, you can do it for national also um, in the sense that, look, um, it's still national, it's still based on an address. So therefore, technically, it is still local. But, you know, if something was just a national company, you're still having to use an address with a citation where it still makes it technically local, although it's the head office which serves, let's say, national. So it's a bit of, yeah, you know, defining that. But essentially, yeah, you can. Um, you can still do, certainly for, for a head office uh, or for a corporate brand you can you can still do it um normally ordinarily they wouldn't um but there's no harm in not you know um <laughs> i don't think nike's head office in london would go and do you know a handful of citations in yell uh, uh and you know 118 or whatever the case may be um, but it wouldn't be a problem if they did. So it's not going to, you know, hinder. But ultimately, it still just it still does boil down to to local in that sense, because in this in the in the sense of local is uh, with local and citations, you're trying to reinforce online that business that business name at that address locally, and that's what you you you're using these to reinforce. Um, it, it, it wouldn't hinder, but it's not going to be like some make or break thing for, you know, a head office to to be listed in that sense. Excellent. Thank you, Tim. I think that covers it. Um, if there are no objections, I'll move on. Okay, number six on our run list is from Scott Clark. Um, Scott uh, asked a question titled, A Large Number of or Orphan Pages in a Sitemap. Scott said, how severe is a large number of orphan pages uh, um, in a sitemap found during an audit? I'm assuming this is uh, a cruel budget waster at the very least, but uh, what else? Um, it was found on a prospect site, not a client site. So I would really have a look at what those pages are because um, I know some like, um, like for example, Woo WooCommerce, um, depending on how it's set up, if a product is out of stock, um, it labels it out of stock, it takes it out of the navigation and um, Uh, and, and they technically become orphan pages from a uh, auditing tools perspective. That's what they kind of label it in. Um, 
but it's still it's still being you know treated kind of correctly in that sense um so a large number in that instance wouldn't be a problem because they come in stock they come out of stock um and it makes sense to the user to remove it out of the navigation and uh when it's out of stock and then when at the minute new stock comes in it comes back in um so from that perspective it's it's not an issue uh but i'm guessing if that was uh when we say a large number i don't know what a large number but you know if we talk in thousands here and they not being treated in that way coming in or going out then yeah there could be an issue uh i would probably look at tidying it up uh not from a sense of sort of a crawl budget but i would i would want to tidy it up so that the search engine really understands what you're doing um if these things are just hanging about all over the place um i would want to tidy it up from that sense if they're not coming back or it's just some weird kind of i don't know sometimes um you know some some of them are like sometimes images attached to labels and stuff um um yeah there's all kinds of different different ways it would appear but i would say depending on what they are would be depending on how i try to clean it up or yeah yeah thank you tim too long to, to cover here but um you should also look at um the dumb seo questions facebook group there's a there's some very useful comments in um for, for this question all right let's move on to the next um and it's a question from joe and john he asks it's titled do canonical tags pass link juice uh joe went on to say or went on to ask uh, also i'm stuck with the thought about some uh, about same domain canonical versus third party site canonical tag how would search bots look and treat them um got my fingers crossed on this one <laughs> um yeah, do canonical tags. I, you go on. So, so in a sense, do canonical tags pass link juice? Um, well, let's let's think about this. Let's put it this way: if a if a third party, you know, a, a, a pretty big third party um in the in the instance where someone took your your you know you sent your content to them they published it and then you chucked you know you had your version of it um and there's like totally outranked you uh which we see all the time in in in, in that sense um and ultimately the way they should treat that is by putting your the, the canonical tag um you know treating with canonical to allow google or, or to at least show the attributing source or whatever the case may be now so in the sense does it pass link juice uh no i don't think in the traditional sense but it does allow search engines to understand who actually produced it and i and i think that has a lot of value in it um not necessarily link juice am i making sense i know what i'm trying to say i, I don't mm. yeah i think i'm getting where you're trying to get it's that if a third party has a canonical to your site then you know you then that would sort of transfer to your site yeah so you're saying these guys actually wrote it um uh, almost as if this is the, 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 the these are the authors 
this is, you know, I mean, we, 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 we know how Google shows these things like in scholarship articles and things like that, where they show the citation source, they want to attribute or they want to know who created this. Um, and I think it would, so I wouldn't say passes authority, but it shows who created it, um, you know, where, where it comes from. So, it, you know, if it's a fairly, you know, decent site that, that, that has obviously published it, it, it's, it's showing, you know, uh, I hate to say, but trust and authority, it's attributing trust and authority to you by that canonical tag. Kind of. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's a vexed question. Um, yeah. I, I, the, 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 I mean, the, the canonical tag, it, 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 if, 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 uh, this the the way that Google Googlebot indexes and works um, w was um, dynamic. The canonical tag would have have that value, I guess. But it, it doesn't. It, it, Google doesn't work that way. Now, all care and no responsibility. I, I wouldn't normally try to, to say this, but I, I just say this from. Uh, having watched uh, Googlebot, um, you know, ticking down a, a, a set of files and uh, um, the consequences of, of a search, um, so on. Um, but um, I wish I hadn't started this. This is getting too complicated for my old head. But so did, you go ahead, Tim. So there's that interesting test that um dan petrovic did in 2012 with the canonical tag and how he hijacked well essentially hijacked uh, uh, uh rand fishkin's blog using the canonical so so in this sense i suppose it it doesn't necessarily pass page juice but it does pass on that like uh, i mean i don't even know what to call it uh, i mean search engines understand what it is and they understand you know who the um the originator of the content is so in terms of link juice uh, i don't know but search engines certainly understand who the original Originator is and will display the originator um, or understand it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The problem, though, of course, is that Google may assign a different canonical to the entity. Um, so <laughs> that's an issue when a site is seen as perhaps more authoritative or trustworthy then the there's a possibility that despite what it says on the page or in the header google may assign a different source as the canonical copy of that thing so there's that element as well yeah it's a it's a, it's, it's a great question Jav and john um a great question now and i i guess if it, we uh, should move on to the next so i'm sure there's a lot we can add to this but um very difficult to, to encapsulate it in such a way that would uh, be understandable from the, the basic user. Um, and anyway, it'd be hard for us to prove what, what we think. Yeah. All right, let's um, 
move on to the next number eight on our run list. It's from Mick King. It's titled Between Keyword Match and Brand Match Domain. He said, services like uh, plumbing, etc. do I go with a keyword match domain or stick with a brand exact match domain? Uh, it seems to rank more quickly and higher. What's your end, you know, so the thing is, what's your end game? Um, is this a business you think you're going to create and you're going to stick with for the next to retirement you know is this your is this your passion or you know what what do you uh, yeah um because ultimately you know uh, what, what is best plumber in in london going to do for you as a, as a brand that's going to sustain you and your family for the next 30 years is that going to build affinity you know is it going to be, be a brand is it going to be something that people will put in their phone book and you know call you every year for a service you know we need to be real about these things if you're not if you if you're in it just for a bit of a laugh for the next couple of years think you're going to you know try and use that as 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 a um, as a lead gen for the actual business, you know, then um, best plumber in London for sure. Uh, but if you're going to feed your family off this for the next thirty years, you build a brand. Build a brand, yes, that's right. Yeah, good one, Tim. All right, let's move on to number nine on our run list. At this time, it's from Bob Marks, and he, the question is titled, Do Google Sites Still Pass Juice? Um, he said, uh, Do Google Sites and other Google properties still pass juice? Is this uh, still worth doing? So, <laughs> when you say juice, I mean, it's like, If you think about a search engine following these links from different things and understanding who's doing what, in what context is this being added, et cetera, et cetera, yes. If it's in the old thing of, I just want to chuck a link here to get this, then no. Um, But yeah, you know, um, if you, you know, if these are already in place, um, or you're thinking of creating, you know, um, a YouTube, a YouTube account, you know, for the brand, um, a couple of different, you know, sort of different things uh, all over the place, you know, different accounts for the brand, etc. You know, uh, as long as it's consistent, it, it's fine. You know, you're building a sort of an infrastructure around to support what you do. Um, in terms of passing link juice, eh, I'm not so sure about that. Um, and I suppose it's what you define as link juice. Okay, so will we move on to the last question on our run list tonight? Linda Lee, it's a question about backlink building. Um, she said, how effective is HARO, H-A-R-O, as a tactic for backlink building? I don't know what HARO is. I hope one of you guys can tell us. Um, she said, what dollar value would you put on each backlink you earn? Are there any metrics you use to uh, track the uh, performance? 
So, um, you go ahead. But, so, firstly, Linda, I think, you know, just, I know you're asking about Harrow, et cetera, but I think you're completely looking at the wrong way um, in terms of links. I, I think you're going about it completely wrong. Um, and I think you need to actually do and understand, um, you know, natural link building a little bit better than going out and, you know, um, because essentially you're looking at, at building links. I think you should understand how you can do this yourself uh, in different ways or shapes or forms and how to do it sustainably over time. That being said, um, <laughs> I don't, I don't see how this company can, can look, I don't know what product or service or your website is. So I don't know, but I honestly don't know how they can, you know, uh, say they're going to get X amount off or off that because ultimately Harrow is, is it all depends on what's in vogue at the minute and what the reporters are asking. Yes. There's a tons and tons of different genres and, and different journalists on there but what happens if in that particular month literally no one asks for anything in that particular genre or tactic or or, or, or that service or website or industry um and you know they they can't pitch anything to a journalist well then that's out the window so and and my second part to the answer I already said to you is I think you need to understand a little bit about um, building something that's sustainable um, and 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 how to go about it yourself rather than buying because that's essentially what you're doing is you're buying links in that sense or or or, or, or paying someone to go and build links for you. Um, so and and i think you really need to step back and understand a bit before you even go down that road um but you know for i think it was two, yeah two and a half thousand dollars you could hire a pretty good writer for that to obviously you would you you know possibly need to do some research um i don't know what your product or company is do do and come up with um, a sensationalized piece uh, that, that, that fits with what journalists are looking for at the minute. One, you're providing, you're creating the content, you're publishing the content, you're then feeding that sensationalized bit of journalism to the other journalists who will then create the other pieces off the back of your piece. One, you've got the content, they attribute everything and to this sensationalist piece, whether it be um, a poll, a survey, some uh, graph or charts that you've created to go with it to back up the, the the sensationalist piece. You know, there are tons of ways for two and a half to create something far better than some shitty eight little links off a journalist who may or may not even be in some mainstream publication I think you you know uh, I think you need to really step back and understand something a little bit better about um, you know building links for your brand and company that is sustainable then then thinking of these ways of uh, you know by paying a company to build them for you or if you are going to do it, you go with a company that is not even going to mention Harrow to you. All right. Um, you should be looking at something that's going to be building at scale nationally, sustainably. Thank you, Tim. Yes, I, I often um, wonder, um, you know, what prompts questions on um, the WSEA Questions Facebook group. Um, I wonder if Linda Lee, and I hope I'm not disparaging you um, uh, without, without cause, but I wonder if you're really mentioning Harrow um, so that people will uh, 
become aware of it uh, and, and, and the, the, the membership of the WCA Questions Facebook group. Well, it's, it's I mean, Harrow's like, wow, well, it's old school, man. I mean, it's really old school. I think, you know, I think the thing is with this is people, people read how can I help my company online or my website? And then invariably always there's something or someone mentioning backlinks. And then the person goes, how do I get backlinks? And Jesus Christ, even Google, you know, allows ads for it. So people get into this thing that, I mean, Google's doing ads for it. There's all this. And I think they can literally go and buy them. But we all know that, um, you know, the, the, the misery after Penguin um, that this kind of shit caused. And I just I just wish there was something more informational. I think we've discussed this quite a few times. You know, if you're going to put, if Google's going to sell these ads, there should be something up there, like a warning, you know, warning before you use these products, you realize that, you know, there's manual penalties, potential of manual penalties and things like this. Um, but on the other hand, you know, people should be doing due, dil due diligence. Like Linda has never asked in the sense, like she was like cost value. Is it worth it? She never asked or said, is there a potential for a manual penalty? Like, I don't think she even realizes that her entire site could have a manual penalty and just disappear from, from search results. That's the that's the worrying thing. Um, is I think the lack of due diligence that people do in the sense of their business online. It's almost as if like this, you know, if you were signing a contract in the real world, you know, you would dive into that. You would, you know, cross the I's, dot the T's. Dot, sorry, other way around, but you would. You know what I mean? If your livelihood was at stake, you would really check this stuff out, wouldn't you? But for some reason, in the online world, ah, yeah, look, go, oh, I'm just going to buy some links. And then, and if that's your livelihood, you know, it's a, it's a problem. I mean, and this stuff hurts. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good one, Tim. All right, um, I think we're at that time. Yes, it is, it is that time. We've answered, or well, actually we haven't answered them all. We've got quite a few uh, additional questions which we'll um, um, put into the run list over the next week or two um, so that we don't um, suddenly have to deal with the, a three week build up of questions. Um, I don't want to tire these guys out. <laughs> okay. Well, look, I'd like to thank uh, uh, people like Michael Martinez who answer questions uh, um, on our Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group uh, through the week. Uh, I'd like to thank um, people who answer questions on our Facebook group and uh, on our panel here uh, each week are people like Tim Kappa, um, Masataki Wasa, and uh, Mikey Fisher Kirshner. Um, your your, your uh, contribution is uh, greatly appreciated. We'll be back uh, at the same time uh, next week um, to do this. Uh, all again, but um, for now, it's um, good night.